Okay, we're going to um, open the uh, March 1st Board of Health meeting. Uh, first order of business is to uh, approve the minutes of the February 1st meeting. I'll give a few seconds to read and then I'll look for a motion. So John said he might be a little bit late. I'm sorry, Dr. Streedy said he might be a little bit late. Okay. He was just leaving work. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll so get going was, without him and then we'll... Okay, and that was half an hour ago, so... Chairs are paying when someone's not here, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll move for a motion to accept the minutes as read. Okay, I'm going to relinquish the chairmanship, second the motion, recapture the chairmanship. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. Okay, Michelle? Uh, tonight's meeting is all about Lisa. <laughs> all right. And Lisa, is, I'm very proud to say that Lisa has gotten grants for her food establishments and food training and, and it'll bring us all on board up to date. So I'm gonna let her just tell you a little bit about them. I really didn't do that much. I asked the food inspectors you to fill out the application. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we know, but I have talked about it with the food inspectors and I felt that our food program here in Lynn um, was ready to step up to applying for these grants and doing the work that we need to do to reach um, accreditation, which one of the things I want to talk to you about is once our food program is accredited, that's part of getting your public health department accredited. So, you know, we're working. It also corresponds with the conversations that we've had about when the establishments come in and, you know, we need to talk about are we going to suspend their license, are we going to do this. We're, this these grants are going to allow us to come up with a standard operating procedure that anybody can implement. It's right there for everybody to understand what's going on. And this is how we're gonna do things. And this is what comes first, second, third. This is what we're gonna do to offer support to the um, establishments, because that's a requirement. So I think it's gonna be super helpful. And I think it's it's what we're ready for in the city now. And I think, um, I, I'm excited, I'm super excited. So we got two grants. One was to do the self-assessment, um, like the cost of actually doing the assessment and having it ver um, verified. And uh, we got a grant for training so that we can go to um, the NEHA conference, the um, National Environmental Health Association conference. They're the ones who are coordinating the FDA's program this year. So yeah, so it's pretty great. exciting. So great. there'll be other grants next year. This grant will be submitted by October and then the portal will reopen for the next set of grants. And hopefully if we do well on the first grant, then we go to the next step, which is you know starting to get each of the nine standards. This will help people that have good intentions but need the help and the training like Sergio is our only avenue of yeah can you help these people yeah. but yeah. more importantly it's it's transparent it's it's everybody will know what to expect when it won't feel quite so like how are we handling this how are we handling this it, it will be very transparent it will be in writing whether it's me whether it's Michelle or it's Norris whoever's here Here's what here's what we're doing. Here's what's been approved by the FDA. Here's what's accredited, and this is what we're going to do. So that's awesome. Yeah, I'm super excited. Good work. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, before we go any further, Michelle, I need a couple of minutes here. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you because I have a few words to say. You know, I'm never lacking for words. Um, I'd like to take a few minutes to thank and acknowledge Dr. John Sarin. Already. Dr. Storetti has informed me that he will no longer be serving on the Lynn Board of Health effective as soon as an adequate replacement can be found. Dr. Storetti has brought a unique set of leadership and knowledge to our board which has served Lynn well. His expertise in the medical field has been a welcome commodity that our board has had during his tenure. Dr. John has always displayed important characteristics that our board has tried to exhibit as a whole. Fairness, Transparency and compliance have guided the Board of Health <clears throat> during John's serving our city. Dr. John will be missed by the city, the Board of Health, and myself personally. One of the unforeseen benefits of serving on a board of any sort is the meeting of new people. Developing a working relationship with someone you just met comes with the territory. 
Years go by and you become friends and co-workers. I'm proud and pleased to call John a friend. I personally will miss you and everything you've offered this board over the years, John. Again, thank you, Dr. John Storetti, for your service and good health to you and your family. Well, thanks so much. Well deserved. Makes me want to cry. I know, I do. I'm like, I'll get all my tears and I don't want to cry. Because <laughs> prior to my position, John and I were, were on the board. It was Ron, John, and I, for, and we had two other members with us, and we that was a long time. It was a long time. I second, I second. Well, thank you. It's been an honor. I really have. Okay. COVID update? COVID update. We are, um, our numbers are slowly going down. And I'm just anticipating, um, like, the next two weeks, especially because, you know, from school, coming back from vacation, and if people had traveled. And so, but so far, not going with, the numbers have been going down, and let's just keep it that way. Uh, vaccine clinics continue to be very successful, and in um, last night we did uh, 75 people, and half of them were new for their first doses. Great. So a lot of them, I think, are the words definitely, you know, men out there and starting to get out there, and it's different people who are coming for their first doses. So that's great in that part. Um, Mayor Nicholson has also rescinded the mask mandate. So that is um, no longer enforced. And also, the schools will be speaking about masks on buses also on Thursday. So they'll be talking about that. Um, we're still going in, in Lynn. You can get tested and you can get vaccines Monday through Saturday. Monday, here at City Hall, you can have your vaccine clinic from four to seven. Tuesday, uh, Mass General Brigham has a van that goes around, and right now they're at the Brickyard from two to six on Tuesday nights, and they'll also be switching to the um, Hibernian Hall. So they'll be in two different locations. Wednesday is the, um, over at North Shore Community College is Cataldo Ambulance, and they do it Wednesday, um, Wednesday and Thursday and Saturday. <clears throat> they do the vaccine clinics there. At North Shore Community College, there's also Curative who does testing. Project Beacon, still on the Linway, is doing testing also. And right now, they're part of the state stop to spread, so they will keep doing testing until March 31st. Great. Yep. So every, every resident in Lynn, or if you don't live in Lynn, you can come to Lynn and get a vaccine or a test Monday through Saturday. With that. Um, lots of Yeah, there is a, a lot of time and effort that's really gone into it. The health division is moving from the fourth floor to the first floor. Um, it'll give us more room and more, um, from, from the pandemic, I've inherited a few more employees. So we're able to all be together in the same area. Instead, right now we're in, we're in different places. So at least a move, a move to the first floor will allow us to all be together. And the inspection and those people are coming upstairs? Yes, and um, the facilities division is going upstairs. Good. And do I have anything else? Mm. Norris is working very hard on the Phoenix Food Hub, which is associated with Gliss and Mass General also. They have, um, there was a $2 million grant given for renovations over at Gliss for the Phoenix Food Hub. So that will be up and coming. Great. Right. Congratulations. Yep, he's done a great job with that. Um, Chris Gomez is working very hard towards um, almost opening up a new senior center. Right. Yep, yep, that'll be wow. really exciting. So, um, the mask mandate, I don't really. Um, are the schools wearing them till March 15th? Is that what I saw from the school committee? March, uh, March 14th. March 14th, the 
the students will be wearing masks, and then after that they can, um, yep, it's optional. And it's important to note, as it was stressed at the school, I was at the school committee meeting, that if a, if a child, the student decides to wear it, that it's, it's to be acceptable and not you know, bullied or, or challenged in any way, so. Joyce is on the mend and due back hopefully at the end of March also. So she's doing okay. She was actually in one day last week before the storm and she is doing well on the road to recovery and that's really all I have. It's been, okay. you know, different kind of, of working with this stuff. And then just old business, our public hearing will be scheduled for April 5th for the food pantries to talk about that. Also at the next, for new business, um, Maya Nicholson will have a representative here to speak about life sciences and to try to incorporate Lynn into those. So that will be um, on April 5th also. Wait. Yep. And that's all I have. Jeez, it's a record. <laughs> Good thing you got it quick. We would have been done by. I know. I was texted you saying, hi, I have a quorum, and it's going to be quick. Uh, <laughs> well, um, I guess we'll get our favorite uh, motion. <laughs> Looking for a motion to adjourn? I'll second a motion. Okay. Second. <laughs> All those in favor, aye. Uh, thank you. Well, thanks so much.